Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Johnny In today's video we're going to go over port forwarding for the PlayStation Portal. So the reason I made this video is because this may be another solution to improve the quality of the PS Portal streaming and the lag latency depending on the issues you're having with the PlayStation Portal. A lot of people are having too many issues that they're just not getting that stable connection or that good image quality. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention in this video that I am going to be discussing is port forwarding. The reason I'm discussing port forwarding is because this is a solution that has helped some people in the community and it has greatly overall improved their connection on the PlayStation Portal to their PlayStation 5. Now, I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody, but I think it has a high chance that it will work for the majority of the people. So what is port forwarding or if you want to call it that, basically, like it says on this website, port forwarding or mapping allows remote servers and devices on the Internet access the devices that are within your private local area network LAN and vice versa. Without port forwarding, only devices that are a part of the internal network can access each other. With port forwarding, anyone can. Whether you're making a Minecraft game accessible to your friends or hosting a small website, port forwarding is a useful way to access software running on your computer remotely. So basically, as you guys get it, um, if you're remotely, you may want to do port forwarding, especially for the PS Portal. So for example, your PS Portal may be in your local network area and your connection in your house, but you're wanting to play it outside of your house, like at a friend's house with Wi-Fi or nothing. Port forwarding actually might help in this case in improving the quality for the PS Portal. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to work for everybody, and a lot of people don't really like port forwarding because it can be dangerous. Uh, I just want to make sure that sometimes people can get hacked or their information or their whole network can get hacked by port forwarding. But it's mostly unlikely to happen to you. But always take precautions and look a little bit more into the research on how to secure yourself when you're port forwarding, especially if you're an important person who is an influencer or something. All right, so the next step we're gonna go is to a website called Port Forward. And Port Forward basically is a website that gives you guides on how to port forward uh, for any router. Uh, for example, there's router guides for like a bunch of routers here that you can find their list on their website, Port Forward. Um, as you guys can see, they have pretty much every single brand or um, of router that you can find for Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So just look around. They have a, a bunch of them. I think they even have the major ones. Let's see if they have Linksys here. Yeah, they do have Linksys uh, as well here. So you're going to find pretty much every single router here. You're going to find any Wi-Fi router or whatever router you're using um, to port forward. And they have like the guides and lists of the stuff. So the next step I'm going to teach you is the PS5. So basically the what people are doing is they're port forwarding their playstation 5 i don't think they have to do anything with the playstation portal uh because the playstation portal is the device but a lot of people are doing the port forwarding with the ps5 and as you guys can see this website has a guide on it as well which i'm not going to be doing it on my end uh, but uh, they do have step by steps on their guide and the reason I'm not doing it step by step because I don't want to compromise my network at all. Um, it works fine for me so I'm not having any issues but anyway as you guys can see here on the website it tells you what port forwarding is basically your PlayStation network to your router and then you port forward it to your PlayStation 5. So one of the most essential things that you're going to need to do is find your IP address on your PlayStation 5 or you can also make a manual one uh, but usually just find your IP address on your PlayStation 5 which the steps in the guide say as well and then followed by the, the final number and a series of comments just write that down I would take a picture of the whole thing to be honest um, they even <laughs> blocked off their stuff here because they don't want you to see it however the reason why I can't just make a guide on this is because every router is going to be different in terms of your port forwarding settings and that's why I recommend the website port forward uh, because it's going to tell you different settings for your uh, place uh, for your routers um, for a lot of people they can have an application on their router uh, as well or you can also do it on Google Chrome I think most routers Wi-Fi routers or anything will have an area where you can actually log into your router um, and usually the password is admin and then they leave blank 
on the password and just username admin um, or sometimes just blank and log in and you should be able to log into your router then you're gonna have to find the port forwarding section uh, as you guys can see on a typical Linksys router, you're going to find it in the app and gaming section. For other people, it may be different names on it. Some may see, might say open port or stuff like that. So it's just maybe different for every single person on a port forwarding. But if you look at the guides as well on the website, they'll let you know what your section is called. If you look for your router, like I mentioned on the website, you will know exactly which router you're using. So um, it will tell you the settings. Like let's just go for example on the Asus router here and let's show you guys um, some of the stuff. So they tell you different models here. As you guys can see, wow, there's a lot of models. So let's just click on one. Uh, basically they tell you the options where your port forwarding is uh, every router. So if you're able to find your router here, um, it'll tell you the options where you can actually port forward. So that's why I recommend that guide, uh, this website uh, for that. So once you log in, you'll be able to find it. Um, some will have it in apps and gaming and stuff like that. So as you guys can see, and basically you're gonna create a port forward. As you guys can see, just follow the directions here. Uh, it, typ it typically is just involves putting in some numbers uh, such as your TCP, UDP. As you guys can see, you can put these protocol if your uh, router supports both of them but here's an, a great example of how it is you can name your application ps4 um, and then it, you guys can put it right there on the settings you can put your tcp and udp ports some of them support both protocols so make sure to put both if you are supported by that and then your obviously your ip address from your playstation or playstation 5 it doesn't have to be ps4 even though it says ps4 here uh, as you guys can see, just put in the numbers, uh, 3478, this works for somebody. Um, I know there's, uh, for the PlayStation 5 as well, there's different numbers. But either way, you guys can see the numbers there um, that you can put for your port forwarding as well for your protocol. Um, and then since the route takes value to range, we create three entries. Each entry has a range value from the list of a as you guys can see they created different entries but for each of them so as you guys can see there's another one entry right here they put them all in order so if it's supported just go ahead and do that as well um, and there's a lot of guides as well on YouTube as well as for PlayStation 5 port forwarding so if you're having those kind of issues you can also look up those videos but the guides are pretty much straightforward um, so it's gonna be different for every single router so that's kind of one of the steps that you should do to look up. Um, if I, if you, if you, if you're not following, if you can't follow this guide, I also recommend just going on YouTube and look up a video that says PS5 port forwarding. Uh, another thing that I wanted to recommend is that certain routers aren't really going to need to do all of this steps. Like for example, my Wi-Fi router is one of the expensive gaming routers. I know some people are gonna say stuff, but honestly, for for my router, uh, I think it's just really well optimized that this stuff is just easy for it, and it just sends a high performance. If I wanna prioritize my PlayStation 5, it I don't need to do all these steps. It's really gonna be dependent on your router. I think the router has a lot to do with it, but if your router doesn't have those type of settings, then I would recommend that you do a port forward um, for your router. And you can also do it on ISP routers. I know a lot of people in the comment section before said, well, dude, you, you, you're you putting a bad information out there. Um, ISP routers are 100% perfect. I'm still gonna say the same thing as I said before. I do not like the ISP's routers. They're extremely, extremely bad. Um, they just have a poor connection overall, so. That's why I don't recommend the ISP routers, but they still work. I'm not saying they don't work. Um, I know some routers might be good from some ISPs out there, but I mean, it still works. So I'm not going to knock you if you have an ISP router, but I feel like a Wi-Fi router uh, from another company is just way better for the most part. Um, for the most part, you're just going to get a better performance off of those type of Wi-Fi routers. But I understand where people are coming from, especially if it comes 
port forwarding because I recommend that you keep your PlayStation 5 connected to the Ethernet cable link or cable. A lot of people are, do not have their PlayStation 5 connected directly with a Ethernet link cable. And honestly, you should have your PlayStation 5 connected with an Ethernet link cable because it's just going to give you the best stable connection and it's just better overall. Even if you have a Wi-Fi performance gaming router, um, I still think that your PlayStation 5 should have a good, good, good and stable connection with the Ethernet link cable. Don't try to repeat myself, but yeah. So pretty much that basically covers it all. There are several different guides on this website for different routers, like I mentioned, um, different port protocols uh, for the UDCP. Um, as for the PlayStation protocols, uh, I think they're. I think it's about the same um, protocols for the most part uh, for the PS5. But I'll put some in the video as well while I'm editing this video. I'll put some protocols that might work for certain people. Uh, for the PlayStation 5, I think they might be a little bit different or they might be around the same thing as well. I don't think they're too different, uh, but I'll definitely put the TCP and the UDP that some people are recommending um, for the PlayStation 5. That way you guys can um, test them out and see if they work for you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think these are the PS4 ones, but they look around the same as I'm comparing them. But I'll definitely put the different ones on the screen uh, right now at the end. That way you guys can see the protocols for the PS5. And test them out yourself when you put them in the settings. That way, um, let me know if your experience is different. I know this may be a little bit odd or random. But the reason I can't just make a straightforward guy for every single person is because we all have different routers. And our settings are going to be a little bit different. But overall, it's just pretty much following this guide it's really not that complicated but you can play around with your settings like that and I'll probably link some resources maybe some videos I've seen on YouTube that might help you out for your PlayStation 5 uh, protocol port forwarding anyways guys thanks for watching this video make sure to have a nice day and peace out one of the things that I wanted to mention that some people may be having problems in apartment complexes where there is a lot of Wi-Fi routers nearby because their neighbors obviously have internet connection as well and they have their Wi-Fi routers on. So essentially when there's so many different Wi-Fi devices such as phones, laptops, smart home things, uh, basically they all have a Wi-Fi signal that is being transferred all around the area which is bouncing up in different places and definitely their Wi-Fi channels are kind of interfering with your PlayStation portal is what I would say for the most part um, and sometimes that can be the reason why the PlayStation portal is not getting really good signal to the device or you're seeing lag or stuff is because of, of the amount of devices there are in your area like phones, um, tablets, uh, laptops. So if you live in an apartment complex, this may be more of an issue because the, everything is so close to each other. So it might interfere with your network. And that's why some people have reported that their devices have improved over nighttime when people aren't actually using the Wi-Fi. So that may be one of the reasons that you may look into it. If you have too many devices that are bouncing everywhere with different Wi-Fi channels, because believe it or not, there, there can be a lot of different Wi-Fi channels or signals being distributed from different devices, whether it's your iPhone, tablet or fridge or whatever. Now, personally, I never really had this problem. I don't live in an apartment complex, so I can't really report um, that. It may be the issue as well because I don't live in one. Um, but that is something that some people have reported. And I heard a bunch of stuff like this before in the past where the, the more devices people are using, the more uh, your Wi-Fi signal gets distorted. That's why a lot of people like to have that direct connection with the Ethernet link cable. But just wanted to mention that out um, for those people who are living in an apartment complex and are having these type of issues.